you know, late last night on college football final of the wee hours, uh, we did a, a, a th- thing at the top of the show. And then during the course of the show of teams going bowling. And we led the show with UConn and Jim Mora somehow beating Liberty who just beat Arkansas that yeah. they are going bowling at six and five at Connecticut and independent. I bring this up because a team that is now officially mm-hmm. not going bowling is Texas A&M after losing to Auburn to go to three and seven on the season. Not only are they three and seven, Paul, at one point they were ranked sixth in the country. Preseason. Uh, and remember back to May 19th, uh, the story of the year in college football, Jimbo Fisher and, and Nick Saban. Uh, books were going to be written about it, 30 for 30s. And now it's all gone. I, I saw this this morning. I wanted to share uh, my friend Pat Smith, who uh, used who started the, the Refine Bomb radio show in Birmingham, tweeted out game paychecks tonight based on a 12 game schedule, Jimbo Fisher, $750,000 a game, Carnell Williams, $29,166 and 67 cents. Of course, referring to Cadillac, the uh, interim coach at Auburn, who was able to get the job done against Jimbo Fisher. So I'd say the bargain for the buck right now is an Auburn who their athletic director is going to have to cut a healthy check to their new coach. But I like, I'm trying to be as, not easy, but I'm trying to be as realistic as I can with Jimbo Fisher. But in year five, and a guy that's noted as an offensive uh, guru or all, whatever wonder, whatever you want to use, whatever you suppose you want to attach him, I I can't. This to me is top three shocking stories this season that have developed. No, uh, I mean you can you can you can have a tug of war on, on what i'm about to say uh that texas a&m can't afford to fire him and they can't afford not to fire him uh they hired him in addition to because in addition to everything else having won a national championship because he had had a reputation as one of the best offensive minds in college football that's been shattered uh he, he he's not getting that back right now uh he's made an absolute mess out of this program uh, his credibility is at, at, at the bottom. He, he's easily done the worst coaching job of anyone in college football this year. Uh, and and what and what are Texas A&M officials going to say about uh, uh, leading toward next year? I, I talked to a head coach the other day about the, the Texas A&M recruiting class and, and the current players. And he said, everyone will get in the portal. Uh, whether it's it's on the record or not. I mean, they'll test, excuse me, let me back up. They, everyone will test the portal, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't mean you're in the portal, um, and then find out what, what, what the situation is. That, that's what's going to happen down there. Uh, and I, I, I often, I, we're, what, six weeks away from National Signing Day, Matt. Yeah. I don't know what's going to happen. I, I mean, I know where they're ranked, uh, at least in perception, but you have to wonder, uh, and this is just a, uh, you, you throw the ball up and see where it goes in terms of, you know, what 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 do they do after having the best recruiting class in modern college football history, at least as long as it's been recorded? Uh, and, you know, can Jimbo Fisher keep this program together? There's a lot of talk now. D- does he have the survival skills to say, OK, maybe I'll hand the offensive play calling over? We. There's so many things that are going to need to have happen with this because I don't think anyone, I don't even know what the betting line on this in Vegas was. If I'd have told you at the beginning of the season, Paul, Texas A&M will not make a bowl game market down. What would you have said? Uh, I mean, we all would have bet our piggy bank savings in our house and anyone's house we could get a hand on because I mean, Desmond Howard, who got a pretty good gig at your network, uh, Matt, uh, sat on the preseason college game day show and picked them to, 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 to get to the final four and maybe play for the national championship. I can't remember uh, which, which one was which, but he had, I think, Pittsburgh, Baylor, Michigan, and, and Texas A&M in the final four. You can quibble about <laughs> two, of the, two of the other ones, uh, but, but I mean, I mean, a guy who sits at the desk of, of, of ESPN's college game day 
thought they were going to the final four. So that's how, I mean, I thought a bad season for A&M was going to be nine and three. I mean, I saw Alabama game, uh, you know, you don't know where, where else, uh, Ole Miss, uh, somewhere, but the schedule was, was pretty good because, uh, you know, they, they had LSU and Ole Miss at home, which are, are two of their toughest games. And by the way, they won a game they shouldn't have won. I know that sounds like I'm being picky here, but remember the Arkansas field goal bounced yeah. off. It, it, it would have been good at a college stadium. So they're really, uh, you know, they're closer to eight losses right now than they are to a winning season. In the Miami game, I mean, you're you're. That's kind of one of the at that, that time that was like the bounce back game that was after Appalachian yeah. State. Oh. I mean, you look and I look. What's the what's the buyout? Uh, it sits today at eighty six million dollars. So there is no buyout. It's just that it's guaranteed. The money's guaranteed. Yeah, right. And and by the way, next year uh, it goes down to seventy six million a year from now. So it's not like it's going to be that much cheaper. Uh, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious if, if this was big business, what would happen? The company would just write it. They would, they would get rid of him, write it off, uh, make it back somewhere else. Uh, and it's really the stigma. I mean, we're talking about big time college football and, and $86 million seems like an enormous amount. It seems like malfeasance. But I, I mean, firing him today doesn't sound as crazy as it did four weeks ago, I don't think. So, but fine. Okay. So I want to peel this. I don't think path. it's, it's going to happen, but I'm just saying okay. it, it, common sense wise. And it, I don't know the, the, the booster situation as well as you, could they, afford, could they write the check? Could they say, could someone come in and say, you know what? Uh, Matt rule sitting out there and yeah. he built Baylor from coming back from a near death penalty and, and Hugh freeze offensive whiz. Although Jimbo has labeled that as well. There's two guys out there that we think, I mean, it, it, we're not there. I I have given, I have heard no evidence of that, Matt. Now, I'm probably not in the loop right now. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, I mean, I, I know people out there, but I, I don't, I haven't heard anything to that effect. Uh, I think, I think it would take somebody very strong to, and, and I don't think there's any more tipping point losing to LSU at home is not really going to factor into the equation. What would that be? The eighth loss? They have a cupcake this weekend. Right. Uh, I mean, how much worse can it get for your, yeah. your, to lose at Auburn to a, to an interim coach who, who, who replaced the guy who got fired because he was basically not capable of doing the job. I mean, you're talking about a really uh, average Auburn football team here that they lost to. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.